Okay, I'm going to show you how I set up the D600 for weddings. But you could do this on any Nikon camera because the menu systems are very, very similar and the control layouts are similar as well. So I'm going to take you through the menu, but I'm not going to go through every item. I'm just going to go onto the main ones that I change for weddings so you can see what I do. If you want to see everything that's in the menu, I suggest you read the manual. The manual is actually not that hard to read on, on them. They're pretty easy. You can just skim through it pretty fast as well. So the first one is just in the play menu. Remember you've got your different menus on the left here and then you go into them and you see all the different items within them on the right. So in the play menu, the first one to make sure you have is image review is set on. So when you take an image, it plays you the preview immediately on the back of the camera. Now we go into the shooting menu. In the picture controls, I use the standard, which is uh, well, it's a standard picture profile really, it's quite contrasty I suppose. I made a couple of changes though, I've upped the sharpening. Well, sometimes I'll push it even higher. I'll have the sharpening up here some, somewhere roughly because I want to make sure that when I'm looking at the pictures on the back of the camera it emphasizes to me what's in focus. It's just remember that whatever you do here on these picture settings has no effect on the raw files. It's only what you see on the back of the camera. The picture you see on the back of the camera is a JPEG preview. It's not the raw file. And the histogram you see on the back of the camera is for the JPEG as well. It's not for the raw file. So the histogram is kind of a lie. It tells you what the JPEG's showing. It doesn't tell you what's in, how much information is in the raw file. You've got quite a bit more latitude than what you see in the histogram, but it's a reasonable guide. I use the standard rather than one of the neutral ones because it makes me be a little bit more cautious about my exposures because it's a little bit more contrasty. Then the other thing I do on the contrast setting is I turn it just down one notch because I think I find it's just that little bit too harsh. But it's given me that I've experimented with quite a few of different picture styles and setups and I've found that this has been the one that I've found the most useful. Okay, so we come back out in sorry, come back out into the uh menu again. Uh the colour space and stuff doesn't matter, that's only gonna affect JPEGs. So it just cycles through again and again and again. Now I don't have any of this stuff really set. It's only going to really affect you for the uh, the JPEGs. I just don't worry about these settings. And the other ones I do is here, right? The role played by the card in slot two. So you have your two memory card slots here, or however they are in your camera. On this D six hundred, it's two SD card slots. So you're writing raw to one. Uh, card and then it's asking you what you want to do with the next one do you want to make it an overflow so when one fin fills up it goes on to the next card or do you want to make it a uh, backup which means it's raw to both cards or do you want raw to slot one and jpeg to slot two well i want to have backup i want raw to both the buffer's pretty good on these cameras uh, so you can just shoot raw to both easily and it's it's fine no any problems with that image quality set to raw and the other one is nephral recording. If we go into this option, you see here that you have the type of compression. You have compressed or lossless. Uh, some cameras have the option for no compression as well. I use lossless compressed because what that's doing is it, it takes the file and where there's just blank spaces essentially, it just gets rid of that. I think that's pretty much how it works. But it gives you smaller raw files without any loss of image quality at all. So I use lossless compressed. I don't use compressed because that's gonna reduce the image quality. The other one I do within this raw recording um, uh, option, the bit depth, I make sure that's set to 14. Now, if you become worried about space on your cards. Let's say you're shooting and you're running out of memory card space. I would then switch to 12-bit. On these cameras, specifically the ones that have a loss of dynamic range, like the D600, D800, D750, you can shoot 12-bit. It does reduce the dynamic range, it does do that, but it's because there's so much on these, you have enough um, latitude to get away with it, but I'll always have the best image quality I can have and I, I'm always set to 14-bit on this. Okay, 
So that's the shooting menu taken care of. Now there's a few things I change in these uh, custom setting menus. So autofocus, this priority selection for AFC and AFS. What does that mean? Well, if we're in the single shot mode, uh, sorry, in the um, autofocus mode where it AFS, where it locks on and then doesn't track, what this does is says, when we press the shutter button, will it just fire straight away, which is release priority, or will it make sure that we confirm focus first and then allow us to press the shutter button? Now, I have it on release priority because when you're in focus priority, although it will make sure that you are definitely in focus, it hesitates, and it will do that on most cameras. There's this hesitation, which can be a little bit too long, and normally the camera achieves actual focus quite a bit before it will let you take the shot. So I am on release for both of these. This is for AFC, it's for when you're in con uh, continuous focus mode. Will it make sure that it's always absolutely dead on focus or will it prioritize your pressing of the shutter button? Again, I leave this on release because I felt that when it's tracking, it is in focus, but it, the camera hasn't confirmed 100%. It, it might be like 95% sure, but it won't give you, it won't let you take the picture until it's 100% sure. And it's just too uh, restrictive. I don't like it. Uh, I find it's much better on release priority because I find that the focus just, it's there anyway. Uh, I don't, I've never had any real focus problems with this uh, camera, and I don't with the, the Nikon bodies. So the AF point illumination, I have that switched on. Focus point wraparound, I have on because sometimes I twist the camera in different angles and I want to get the focus points back quickly. I'll show you what that is. I press the info button, you see my focus points here. Focus point wrap is this. When I move the focus point from the middle, you see it's on the middle bit there, to the side, it comes out to the edge. And then when I keep going to the right, it jumps over to this side. That's focus wrap, it, like it wraps to the other side. If you switch that off, you'll get a hard stop. So when you go from the middle to the side and you keep pressing right, it won't go anywhere. So let's say you're shooting one way and you want to flip it a different direction, which I do sometimes. I sometimes think, oh no, I need to be this way because it uh, give me a, like a slightly easier angle. Then I'll, I'll just use that focus wrap. That's up to you though. I mean, just whatever's best for you. Okay. Let's go down some of these. Now the number of auto autofocus points. This camera has the option for 39 or 11. At weddings I use the fewest possible because of exactly this. If I want to get my focus point to the outside, I want to do it in two presses, not in sort of 16 or something where it takes forever. I want to get there quickly and this covers everything I need. If I want the top, I get the top straight away. I don't want that many, I don't want 39 fo focus points. I will use more focus points on a portrait shoot, but not on a wedding shoot. Because it just doesn't really kind of, it doesn't help me to have to keep moving. I'm gonna miss shots like that. So, built-in autofocus assist illuminator. On portrait shoots, I will sometimes switch that on. I would, um, I would use it at a wedding if I wanted a natural light shot where I wasn't using flash and the lighting was particularly bad, I would just switch it on. And what that is, it's this little lamp here at the front when you focus. And I've said this before in a previous video, people say, oh, it's not professional to use that. I think that's rubbish. What's professional is getting a shot. And um, however you do that, there's nothing that's unprofessional about how you use your camera, unless it in some way would do something that would mean that you'd ruin the shoot somehow. So there's no, there's no way around that, I think you should use it. Okay, so we're coming down, I'm just gonna go to anything that I've particularly changed. I don't think there's anything here, section. Beep is always switched off. I don't use the grid in the the viewfinder, it can bring up like a grid to help you line things up. Let's go down to, I know the next one I want. Okay, on this camera, the OK button here doesn't really do anything. 
on cameras that allow it, I would set that to zoom in. Like when you press play and you look at your picture, that will let, let you zoom in. Now, these are the important ones. The buttons on the front, these two, yeah? You can program these. It's amazing how many people don't program these buttons and they're so useful. Uh, why wouldn't you do that? One of the reasons I shoot Nikon at weddings, so let's get back into this, is because it allows me to have the spot metering on the focus point. What that means is when you move this around, when you go to spot meter, it will take the reading from specifically the focus point, the spot of it. So that could mean that someone's backlit or um, in awkward lighting and you put the focus point over their face. Then when you hold down this button, which I've programmed to spot meter, whilst you hold it in, it will meter for you on that focus point. It will meter on that focus point there for you, which is really cool because that means that someone can be moving and they come into a backlit situation whilst you're tracking them on this focus point and instead of having to take the camera away from your face and readjust your exposure all you do is whilst you're shooting and you're, you're looking through the viewfinder just put your finger down on that and carry on shooting and it will expose for the spot that you're on I think that's just brilliant I really like that feature it's so useful and I can't do that on my 5D Mark III irritating but yeah that's what I use it for I do that um, and the one at the top this button the top one I have it set so it comes into my menu like this for my auto ISO sensitivity settings now your auto ISO sensitivity settings are in the shooting menu ISO sensitivity settings there but I I want to be able to, on the fly, let's say I'm in a room, I want to be able to change my minimum shutter speed. That's often what I want to change. I want to be able to say, right, I want to get to like um, 400th of a second and I'm there. Yeah, and I'm shoot, da -da 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 -da, shoot. And then when I want to hit it again like this, I can change it back down to 160 and then carry on shooting. Yeah. Or I might say, I need to, I really need to get my eyes up uh, higher here and I can just bump it and I'm done. Or I can then just switch it off. Now the way I switch it, the ISO button on this camera is here. The way I switch it on and off, also ISO, is I just press ISO and then change the front dial. And you can see, it's auto ISO is now gone. If I switch that again, it's on again. So that's just holding down the ISO button. And then you turn the, the dial at the front, that switches auto ISO on and off. Or, if you want to, you can press the button on, that I've set on the front here. And you can turn this on and off here. Really easy like that. So at weddings that's brilliant because I can come in and just change it so quickly and easily. Plus if I put my grip on, another reason I have the spot meter on the lower button is if I put the grip on and I go to a vertical orientation I can still, like this, as it would be like this, if I have the grip on here, I can still tap that spot metering button like this, which is great. Okay, back into the menu. That's right. I think that's probably it. Now, I've reversed the indicators, so my dials go in a different direction, but that's just a personal preference. I like it that my picture gets brighter when I wheel to the right and darker when I wheel to the left. Um, so I've set that as well. Now, the you um, save user settings. This is one of the things that's great on the D six hundred. Some cameras in Nikon have this, and some don't. I think it's really useful. I can set the camera however I want it to be, and then save out from that menu setting. Save user settings. Those settings to either U one or U two. That means I could be shooting in. Let's say I'm shooting in aperture priority and I've got my camera set a certain way. I can then have, for instance, I could say that I want my shutter speed to be one four hundredth of a second here, 
and let's say it's going to be 1 1 25th of a second on U2. That means to change my minimum shutter speed in auto ISO aperture priority, I would just literally just flick between those two. Or I could do something like set the camera for um, reception type shots or indoor shots where I want to use flash and I have the camera in manual. I could say U1 could be manual mode, shutter speed 1 1 60th of a second, aperture f4, ISO 1600. So I could be shooting indoors, let's say I'm in aperture priority norm normally, shooting away, come into a dark area, flash goes on, switch to U1, far away. Because the camera, the flash will auto expose in TTL. For me at weddings, that's actually what I do. Um, normally with these settings, I have one set to that. It's the F4, one one hundred sixtieth of a second, and um, ISO sixteen hundred, and that's for flash. So that goes on to U one, and then U two. I have for one four hundredth of a second aperture priority for uh, moving shots and things outdoors. So if people are moving faster outdoors, and I want to be able to stop some movement and so on, I just quickly switch to U two, and then for using flash indoors, I switch to U one. The rest of the time I shoot in a mix of mostly manual mode and some aperture priority as well. So it depends what part of the day. The other thing I do is I have my camera set to continuous high uh, because I want to be able to, if, I, if something happens quickly, I want to be able to fire off a few shots quickly. The D600 has not got a high frame rate. It's about five and a half frames per second. It's slow really. Um, but at the same time, it's fast enough for weddings. I mean, that's plenty fast. You just don't need more than that. Uh, if you've got more, you can use it, but it doesn't really matter. Now, regarding focusing, this dial here locks the focus. So let's say you're on the center focus point here. Yeah, this is, represents the focus array inside. And I lock this. Now, when I try to move my focus points, you see it doesn't move. And when I switch it back down again, now it does move. When I shoot weddings, uh, a lot of the time, I will just use the center focus point because the center focus point is the most accurate. And there are then times when I will switch that and then start using it, moving the focus points around. So sometimes I will lock, um, but not always. Sometimes I'll lock it off. Now the reason... I use the center focus point is because when moments happen, let's say you're doing reportage work, capturing moments, when moments happen, if you try to move your focus point and adjust your composition and stuff, by the time you've done that, which does not take long, often the moment's gone. So I tend to shoot with a center focus point um, focus recompose it it's I personally find it quicker for reportage stuff to do that and then when I'm doing anything that's slightly more considered I will then start moving my focus point around the only thing you have to be careful at is if you're particularly wide apertures but what if you're at 1.8 f2 and stuff it's okay and I um uh, that's the only type of lenses I take to weddings if you had 1.4s then that's a different story um yeah you might have to be more careful at that point but yeah, that's the that's the difference. White balance, I leave on auto. Actually, you know when I started shooting weddings, I actually started shooting them. The first few weddings I shot, I shot in JPEG because I didn't know that RAW existed. I know really, that's the truth. Um, I didn't know RAW existed and I was shooting weddings uh, in JPEG and I became really, really good at changing the white balance and getting my exposures bang on and everything because I was shooting in JPEG. So part of me thinks it's quite a good idea to do that, but not for weddings, just for your practice. <laughs> but yeah, I just leave it on auto because I can just change it afterwards. It's just another thing that would sort of get in the way that I'd have to do. Um, other changes. Now, if you have your a Nikon that you can put the ISO onto this button, you can do that. Um, or you can leave it on the back here. I used to get frustrated with the ISO button being here at the back, 
but I shot with the D3S for ages and that has it on the back too. And eventually I kind of just got used to it and then it didn't really make any difference. A lot of these things are a case of just using a camera enough until you get familiar with it. Once you get used to it, it doesn't really make any difference anymore. Yeah, so that's, anyway, that's how I have the, the camera configured. I don't think there's anything particularly there. Oh yeah, the metering mode I use most of the time is this one. I don't know whether they call it matrix on this or whether that's the Canon term, but it's all evaluative. It's the one that covers all of the, just gives you a balanced exposure for the full frame. I'll try to show that mode there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one I use, and like I said, I will use the button on the front, you can see, to switch over to metering, spot metering. And like I said, on Nikon, that's attached to the focus point, which is really cool. Okay, anyway, that's how I set them up. Both cameras, I have two of these, and I set them up the same. So it's easy to just switch between the two. I think also mixing camera bodies isn't such a big deal, especially they're so similar, the control layers are pretty similar. But yeah, that's how that's how I set it up. So anyway, I hope that was useful.